Hey guys, my name is Johanna and I'm a third year European Studies Bachelor student. Hi, um, it's some time ago that I actually um, made a video for the vlog about an expedition. Um, yeah, as you all know, things have changed quite a bit. I'm taking you right now actually on a walk, on my daily walk, to get out of the house, to get away from, from my laptop, from yeah, the place I'm sitting in all day. Um, and I just want to tell you a little bit, yeah, give you an update of what has happened in the last um, weeks. So because of Corona and everything, I went back to Germany. And um, in the beginning, I was super yeah, anxious of how the whole situation would, would go and how I'm going to write my bachelor thesis when I'm not in Maastricht when I can't access the library and I can't access the travel books which are in the yeah in the archive below the library. Um, I did choose a book. <laughs> I want to shortly tell you about that. So the book I chose is called Lady Stanhope or the Memoirs of Lady Stanhope. And Lady Stanhope was a British woman who traveled in the early 19th century. Uh, first she traveled through Greece and like some parts of Europe. And then she settled down in Syria. And she not only settled down, but she went native. That's something um, which was called when people not only settled down somewhere, but adopted to foreign customs and started to live like local people. So she started to wear turbans and uh, yeah, just lived her life there. And she had a physician who traveled with her. Um, and this physician um, wrote later a book about her. So um, in this book, he described her travels. Yeah, so that's um, actually super interesting because she did not write her own memoirs, but like this, uh, yeah, this man who accompanied her wrote uh, books about her and her life. And um, Lady Hester Stanhope, she was from the British arist aristocracy, so um, she was yeah, a, a member of the upper class and was quite uncommon back then for women to travel alone um, to actually, yeah, to go native. And there has not been much written about women going native in general. So I want to add on to the whole academic debate about how um, women were also agents of colonialism, so that women were not only, you know, accompanying men on their travels, or how women were not only, you know, um, yeah, the subject of the male gaze. Because often in travel books, you see a lot of descriptions about um, women, but rather about like the local women, about what they wore, and often they were subject of a highly sexualized discourse. So I want to add on to that and show and present a woman who, uh, yeah, did something really different what women did back then and kind of, you know, I don't know, <laughs> did her own life. <laughs> so that's what I uh, want to add on to. Um, yeah, so that's about the book I chose. Um, and right now, the only time, or I mean the only time, like, I think, like many others of you have it as well, the only contact I have with my supervisors or my group is um, th uh, through the weekly Zoom meetings. And obviously it's good to have contact with others, but it's also not the same as if we would be together in one room um, discussing things. But it's best as it can be uh, right now. And it's really cool to, to have the support of people who yeah, go through similar things as you do right now. Um, and I really um, highly appreciate that. So what I surely want to talk with you about is the struggles of being, um, you know, of not being able to go to the library, to the archive. So what I'm doing right now is I'm relying on online versions of uh, the book I chose. Sadly, Maastricht University doesn't have an online PDF version of, uh, yeah, my book. <laughs> And so I'm relying on other databases. The library has been super helpful in that they told me or they gave me hints to like many online resources and databases which I can use. But obviously it's always hard to know if this version is reliable. So what I'm doing is I'm going through uh, different databases, finding different versions of the book I chose, and then I'm comparing them to each other and see like how many, like if all the pages are complete, how the illustrations are in there. So just in order to establish the reliability, because I mean, <laughs> I want to base my bachelor thesis on a book which is actually reliable and not like a forgery of, of a book which I actually want to research. Um, when I'm back from my daily walk, yeah, <laughs> I'm obviously not the only one. 
taking a walk right now. When I'm back from my uh, walk, I will also show you some of the databases I've been using. And I can also show you the book um, that I'm researching. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's how it's going for me. Um, I hope you all are safe and dealing with the situation as best as you can. I think right now it's important also for me um, to not get too much stress. Um, I think writing a bachelor thesis is always some kind of a stressful process and there are always setbacks. But now in this time where you're isolated and you don't have the normal support network um, that you normally enjoy, um, I think it's super important to not let these setbacks like really de yeah, define your worth and to let you crush. And that's something I've been struggling with from the beginning, but now it's uh, getting better. So I hope it's uh, the same for you in whatever situation you're in. Um, yeah, and uh, I think that's all what there is to tell about me at the moment. <laughs> I hope you um, also have, wherever you are, you have some sunshine and you can enjoy some time outside. <laughs> As promised, now I'm back from my walk, sitting again at my desk, and I just shortly wanted to show you some of the online resources I've been using. Um, maybe that's also interesting for you, and I think in general it's always good to have some uh, backup options. Shortly, probably you guys know it already, but I uh, just shortly wanted to uh, make you aware of the um, remote access uh, page of the uh, library website that you can find everything on how to access um, databases through which library actually has a um, yeah, is subscribed um, even though when you're not in Maastricht and not at the uh, university faculties uh, so then one database which is actually the university has a um, or university library has a trial version on this one I think until like somewhere in June and as you can see, that's from the Adam Matthew um, database, and that's Age of Exploration. But they also have different uh, topics, and there you can find um, primary sources, which I think is super useful. I also like the setup of the page. <laughs> Another one I'm using is Internet Archive. That one is free for everyone. And there you can not only find, as you can see, not only you can not only find books, but also other uh, movies and other websites. That one is super helpful. I can just... Um, yeah, I recommend using this one. And the one where I'm using from my book, you can see my book, The Memoirs of Lady Hester Stanhope. This is called The ha Haithi, Haithi Trust. Um, that one is super cool. You have a lot of primary sources. And here you can uh, basically, you know, flip the pages. And uh, yeah, my Wi-Fi is super bad here. <laughs> and then you can see here. So you see it is not the same as like having the real book. Yeah, so as I said, like having the real book is always, there's always an, a value to that, which you can't, yeah, you can't compensate that with like, online um, versions, but it is better than nothing. And I can still, you know, read it and, and analyze it. So uh, that I'm super uh, thankful that I actually have these online resources. If you know any others, just, uh, you know, comment under this so that I could also check them out. And um, yeah, next week I will make another vlog and I will tell you about uh, how exactly the writing process is going because now I actually have to start writing. I finished my research design, I got a green light from my supervisors and now I have to start writing. So that's something exciting, scary at the same time. So I will let you or keep you updated about that one. <music> I think it's super important to have a structure of like what do you want to do and when you want to do it so here I actually have um, my <laughs> timetable <laughs> I'm trying to follow it so what I did is like I uh, distributed the or yeah the, the remaining time and looked like okay what do I have to do which chapters do I have to write what research do I have to do so I'm hoping that this will help me to get some structure and every time when I uh, yeah finish something, I can tick it off my uh, <laughs> my timetable. Um, yeah, I think that's super important. And let's see how that goes. Um, I'm still kind of quite in the beginning, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a tutorial meeting now um, 
it's Wednesday. I always have on Wednesdays my meetings for the Marvel group. And I'm actually like curious what we're going to discuss. I think we will all like talk a little bit about how far we are in the research process. I think all of us are slowly starting to, you know, write, actually start writing something. I mean, we also have to do like the research. Uh, study Belgium or something. I'm trying at the moment, but it's still a bit, uh, yeah, not conclusive, but yeah. I'm still trying. I'm not saying this, of course, but I'm gonna say something that I'm not saying, but... Uh, there's two books uh, in the UM library, actually, uh, that I cannot find digitized versions of. I don't have all of the titles at hand. That and they were like, okay, so we're gonna ask you for the digital version and we didn't find the digital version, so unfortunately we can't give you access and yeah, so I don't have those two books. Uh, uh, take that on, Annemieke. Um, did you pass on Romanus guidelines? It's a different genre from the thesis that you're writing. Um, yeah? Yeah, I think that you did. As far as I'm concerned, that's it for now. Yes. <laughs> Love my internet connection. <laughs> Love it. Next week, what will we do next week? We will, uh, yeah, you can um, yeah, present your uh, proposals. Okay, as you might have uh, seen, my internet connection, my Wi-Fi connection is super bad today. So that's obviously a problem if you're having Zoom tutorials and the connection is not good. Uh, so it was constantly a bit like, yeah, stuck. Anyway. Um, just want to shortly let you know, so um, we just had a quite short meeting and we all just update each other on like how, how it's going. And I think the main problem people have at the moment is uh, that we're not in uh, Maastricht and that we can't use the library. So we are all just sticking right now with the Ask Your Librarian um, function, um, which is good. You know, so it gives us at least some uh, opportunity to have some things, some materials online. But I think it's still like it's an edit yeah, thing you have to take into consideration. Um, and I think this is what most people struggle with at the moment. Uh, because interconnection was so bad, I couldn't really ask uh, or couldn't film for you. <laughs> but uh, another thing which might be interesting for you is because this on expedition project, um, it is not only for us, you know, to get to know, like for us, few people who are doing this project to get to know more about the, uh, yeah, the collection. It's also, you know, in case like in the thing, whole thing of societal relevance. So we are also supposed and required to uh, write a Wikipedia article. It's actually super fun because I've always used Wikipedia, but never thought really about who exactly is writing these articles. So we will have an actually an online workshop from someone who is, I think, a specialist for Wikipedia or something, an expert. Um, and then we have to write a Wikipedia article either about the book we chose or the author or like a topic or something. And I never knew that there's so much work behind a Wikipedia article because first you have to see like what's written about, you know, at least broadly about your topic. And then, you know, like so that you can link to the other articles and you obviously also have to use like references. But it has a little bit of different style than the normal academic paper. So it needs to be way more neutral and, and informative. So that's actually something, I think, something exciting to, to try out. Um, so that's something I have to start now as well. Um, and I think that basically covered what we talked about right now. So I think also for me, it's more about now, like really, I already wrote my introduction, but now it's like continuing to write, continuing to research. Um, because what my supervisor said, which is, I think, something super smart is that writing and thinking is one process. So you can't just, you know, think and then start writing because while you're writing, you're also thinking. I don't know if that's clear what I'm saying right now, but basically it's one process process and one does not go without the other so meaning we really have to write <laughs> i got that now so i will uh yeah get into more into the process <laughs> over I can finally eat my lunch <laughs> and digest a bit what uh, yeah the tutorial in general <laughs>
<laughs> it's cool. I hate like this down off camera. <laughs> Cool. So, um, hi guys, I'm actually managed to, as I promised, I managed to organize a short uh, talk with two of my peers. It's actually, I don't know if you can see them. Leo and Sarah, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, I just want to follow up with them a little bit about like what's um, happening with their with their thesis, what's happening, especially what's happening with their books, because I think it's super interesting for you guys to know a bit more about the content of the special collections, and both of them choose at least one or two books, so they will tell you a little bit about that now. Oh, I already started. Uh, okay, okay, that's cool. <laughs> okay, so uh, sorry, because you're already in, in my big screen here right now, I remember the last time you said that um, you chose a book about the early colonialism in Congo, I think, and um, like basically about what Belgium did there. Is this still the book you chose? Yes, it's still the book I chose, and I found something really, really interesting about it, because it's not only about um, you know, Belgian colonialism and the early years of Belgian colonialism, but it's also propaganda. So it's really interesting because that means the way it is written and, and everything is really written in a certain way. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> and is it like, is it like a trail book by, by a man who then basically like wrote about his, his experience or, or what is like, what is the style of writing? How can we imagine it to be? Um, so it's not the guy who wrote the books I'm looking at. So he's called Martin de Nos, and he's like this unknown figure. I cannot find anything about him anywhere. This is just crazy, but okay. But it's really unlikely that he went himself because parts of his volumes are uh, plagiarized to from another author and another French explorator that went into the Congo. And... Um, I really think he didn't go himself, but he was like engaged by the editor that wanted to make those volumes uh, uh, come out, basically. Uh, he was engaged to write them because I suppose he was like a well-known um, uh, writer and that the, the editor thought it, he would be an, um, an adequate uh, writer for the books. So that's also why it's interesting in a way, because the book is more like a novel, I would say, you know, more like um, presenting the different explorators and how they went about it, but not, it's not in the first person, you know. So that's really interesting, I think. You had to change the, the camera, the angle. <laughs> I actually think that's super interesting because I think it happened more often, right, that like people didn't really travel there, but they just, you know, read stuff from others, but then kind of manage so that it sound as if they went there. <laughs> but that's, that's yeah. super interesting. So you just have one, you chose one book then, which you're analyzing. Yeah, me too. Ah. And what's the, what's the other one? It's the same, basically it's the same um, uh, work, if you want, but there's mm -hmm. two volumes. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And they're quite long each, but that's good. <laughs> oh, the more fun. <laughs> so you're going to manage. But thank yeah. you so much, Sarah. Uh, thank you for telling us. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, Leo, do you want to... One second. Um, sure. Uh, I also have uh, two books, but they are very different books. Um, the first one is more of a letter collection. Like, I have a copy right here. Um, and it's what's interesting about these is that it's really just this 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 travel this traveling lady, uh, Mario Wortley Montague that I'm studying. She's really just writing to all these other people, and there's a lot of like personality in her letters. I really like that in the in like analyzing her text because you really see um, you really see what kind of person she is uh, in, as well uh, as where she traveled, what she was doing. So I find that really super interesting in reading it. Uh, and I guess my other work is very different because uh, that one was written by uh, George Sandis and it's a more official travel account like he uh, had backing of commercial enterprises so he was paid to travel there and you really also see this reflected when you read him because it's really very very much more formal and it's kind of harder to study as well because you don't really see the author's personal opinions as much as in uh, the the letters of Montague but they're both really interesting books and I'm like really looking forward to studying them further so they both in English because I remember the last time you said that you like shows books which were in Dutch and English are they both in English or 
Uh, yeah, the book uh, on Sandys, uh, actually what uh, the Jesuit collection in the university has a Dutch translation of the original text. The original text is in English and uh, the letters were also originally in English, though there are some French excerpts, but I have a fully English version of that as well. So thank the Lord that I don't have to translate. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, Leo, thank you so much for for yeah telling us a little bit about your books. So uh, yeah, again, I'm really thankful for both of them. I hope you can see them. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, agreeing to, to tell you a little bit about it, um, and that is basically yeah what I wanted to tell you about in this vlog. So to give you a little bit of more um, yeah of more research content, I told you about uh, what I'm writing about. You remember this uh, lady has a Stanhope, this crazy woman went around um, and uh, went native in Syria. And now you know a little bit about what Sarah and uh, Leo are writing about. So yeah, um, thank you for watching this again when you made it to the end. Um, <laughs> and in the next vlog, I will tell you a bit more about the research process in itself. So um, how exactly is, is it going? What are the different steps? Um, yeah, I will also then again take you with me on a tutorial and film there a bit. Um, yeah, so again, thanks for watching and I hope you like it. If you have any comments, let me know.